YouTubers, it's the first day of spring and I'm going to make a pea-licious pasta and chasing it with a very refreshing cucumber gimlet. It's all here on Monday Bite. Hi guys, I'm Vivian Chan and welcome to this week's Monday Bites. It's the first day of spring, it's finally here. And you know what that means? We are all about peas. JP just showed you a ton of varieties of peas. Usually, most commonly actually, most people see peas in this form. They're frozen, our classic go-to vegetable staple, but there are also a ton of other peas out there. There are these delicious snow peas, which are a little flatter, and there are sugar snaps, like this. These are great, nice and crisp. However, how did peas become this? They come from pods like these. It takes a whole lot of pods to get to these, trust me. And I love pea season because it's definitely, it's screaming spring is here. You can always find them at your local supermarket or your local farm stand or farmer's market. But definitely go out and get them. They're so sweet and delicious. The only difference about these peas, the English peas, are the pods are inedible. But you know who loves them? Worms. So throw them in your compost and you know what? It will be really great for your garden. So we have about two cups of peas here. Oh, one tidbit I wanted to share with you guys that I learned from the farmer's market today. You know how you pick out a great pea pod? You want them to be plump. Flat means the peas are small. Too big means that the peas are old and they're so starchy. So you want just right, just like Goldilocks. And when you pull them, they hang out on their own sides. Except for that one, he's a runaway. All right, so let's get started on one of my absolute favorite dishes, our creamy peas and pancetta. I'm gonna throw in a little pasta because I like carbs. We are gonna feature all three peas. I have a nice boiling pot of salted water. I'm gonna blanch the first, first peas, which is English peas. They won't take long, they're gonna take about two minutes. But one neat trick about a little restaurant thing that I'm going to show with you guys, share with you guys, not show, I'm showing and sharing. Um, we're going to cook them in intervals. Instead of doing it three separate times, lifting and dropping in nice bed, lifting and dropping, you're going to add them like a ladder. First, this is going to take about a minute, and then you're going to add on this at the next minute, and then lastly, the 30 seconds. Why do you want to do that? You don't want to overcook the snow peas. They're a lot tender, and they're really soft, and if you cook them all at the same time, you won't get that texture. What you're going for is a nice crisp tenderness. Actually, this another great indication about peas, English peas, they float up. So what we're gonna do, they're most floating. We're gonna drop our sugar snaps. Plop. Give them a quick stir. We also have really powerful ranges, so it might not take me the full time. But trust me, you'll see when they float. And last but not least, snow peas. Kim was nice enough to cut them off for me. I'm gonna toss them. Oops. Toss them, toss them. What are the uses for snow peas? Snow peas, Sarah just asked a great question. Ooh, hold on one second. What are, use, what are great uses for snow peas and sugar snaps? I love cutting them and putting in salads. You can eat them raw, but English peas you can't because they're super starchy. Hope that was helpful. And you know what? Oh, great thing. I actually have a nut allergy, certain nuts. And instead of adding nuts to my salad for that extra crunch, I actually add other vegetables. Carrots, peas, gives it that nice crunch. Or you can just add croutons too, or everything. So that's been about a minute or so. They're all floating. You're gonna shake off excess water. We are very spoiled here because we have a massive ice machine. But I know a lot of, I know it's very difficult at home to make an ice bath. I know we mention it a lot on our website. However, I found this quick way for you to make a nice ice bath. Woo! Hold on one second. Just transfer this. Bounty of peas! And Ms. Marie was wondering Ooh. if you I'm gonna need, yes, I did. I, great question, I did trim the end right here because otherwise they're gonna get too stringy. So it's very hot. Be right back, let me get some water. This is what happens when it's live. Feel free to keep asking me questions and I'm gonna share with my 
little trick about an ice bath. So I like to put a nice cold pitcher of water in the fridge overnight and it gets super, super cold or you like a regular one that you can actually drink from. And then one tray of ice cubes. And what you do is put that in and it gets so cold that it shocks. That's exactly what's happening now. And why do you want to shock your vegetables? It has that nice crisp tenderness. Oh, snap. Um, but it's still cooked. So what's not to love? Crisp vegetables are cooked. This is also a great trick if you're making your own crudite. All right, we're going to put this here. Oh. Now, what's the other part of creamy peas and pancetta? The creamy and pancetta part, because now we have the peas settled. I chopped up some pancetta, and I really want, I love pancetta because it's salty and it's fatty. I rendered some of the fat out. We did this a little ahead so you didn't have to watch pancetta cook. I'm going to transfer this to a paper towel lined plate. And this is to really help soak up any excess oil to make sure my pancetta cubes are nice and crunchy as a garnish. If you don't have pancetta, feel free to use slab bacon. Just cut it up any size you want, but, a, you know, a nice white as a garnish. Or, you know those smoked turkey wings or drumsticks that you have at the supermarket? That's also a great alternative. Again, you just need a little, not a lot. You're going to let that hang out here. Anna Maria, 100% you can use frozen pea. Just make sure they're thawed. Shake out the excess water so it doesn't dilute your sauce, which is another tip I'm going to share with you guys. But hey, this is just a little knot to spring, but this is also an every green dish. So make it whenever you're, you know, missing spring or just want welcome spring. Now we're going to make a roux. Ooh. I just sprinkle, roux is just a nice thickening base for your sauce. Pancetta fat. AP flour, all purpose. You can use whole wheat, whatever you like, any kind of thickening. The goal of this is to incorporate all the fat into the flour. You want it nice and toasty. Mmm. Too bad this is not smell of vision, because guys, it smells amazing. All right, just golden brown is great. All the fat and the flour have become one. Now we're going to add our chicken stock. Oh yeah, we're cooking now. Continue to whisk. No clumps here. Ooh. You're gonna add some heavy cream. That's what makes it creamy. If you guys don't want to use full cream, you feel free to use half and half, or even milk, whatever you're comfortable with. This is gonna take a little bit to reduce. So, while we're hanging here, I wanted to show you guys another popular dish for peas. It's a delicious pea puree spread. I love to keep my peas a little textured, so I don't like to puree it too much, just a little chunky. And we topped it off with fresh mint leaves. Nice little pea full to light dish. Meal, whole meal. So we're gonna render this. Lily Marie said that she loves how your shirt always matches her Lily Marie, Lily Marie, right? Lily Marie, thank you so much for noticing. <laughs> it's very sweet. I try, trying to make this fun. It is Monday, and I know Monday sucks. We've waited so long for spring, so why not be fun about it? I almost put this on fire. This is real life. See, I'm very honest with you guys. We had that relationship. I'm going to have to pay for that. Uh, call me, somebody that has a linen factory. Can you remind us what you're making? I am making, welcome to all of you. That We are a little early today. I'm making, I'm welcoming spring because I've waited so long. It's been a long winter here in New York City. I am making a creamy pea pasta, peas and pancetta, and I'm gonna chase it with a refreshing cucumber gimlet. And guys, if you're not into booze, 
don't worry. We are, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a non-alcoholic one. But we are gonna have an alcoholic one because you know what? JP needs his drink. It's Monday Bites. So this has reduced about half. While this is hanging out, I did mention that I do wanna make this a complete meal. So I do wanna add pasta to it. I am using fresh pasta. I'm gonna, this is orecchette. I like to use small pasta because each spoonful, you get to have a little bit of everything. If you're going to use bucatini or spaghetti, it's gonna be all over the place. Trying to catch a little piece, long pasta, not the smartest. So we're using fresh pasta into our, ah, into our salted water, and it's cooked very quickly. It's gonna be like two to three minutes. Not even, this range is so hot. The important part is, guys, you don't wanna overcook uh, fresh pasta, otherwise you get mush. Kind of like the canned stuff. So, this is reduced. I'm gonna add a little lemon juice. Not yet. Actually, I'm gonna grab my piece that's been hanging out. The trick is to shake off all the excess water and probably find a large colander to catch all your peas because it's a little abundant here. Because if you add any extra water, excess water, it's gonna dilute all that delicious sauce that you try to reduce. Plop him in. Woo. Okay, I have another linen. Hopefully I don't burn this one. Oh goodness gracious, this one's even smaller. Oh guys, the pasta's ready, it's al dente. Shake off excess water. This is a workout. Transfer this to your pan. I know it's usually a side dish, but I'm just gonna add it all together because it's Monday and we're gonna have a party. So we're gonna toss it all together so everything is nicely coated. Season with the freshness of lemon juice. So that pinchetta can be cut with a little fresh lemon. You can also add a little lemon zest if you like some fresh brown pepper, toss, 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 and guess what? Refilling the pepper mill would be really useful. <laughs> Trust me, there's some in there. <laughs> We're gonna fold it, and we are ready to plate. Ooh, for sure, you guys are so smart. Turkey bacon is another great alternative to pancetta. You guys are, I like that this is a teamwork. You guys give me ideas, I give you ideas. It's a beautiful thing. So we're gonna have a big old bowl of pasta. I know the recipe doesn't call for it, but you know, I'm getting ready for my beach bod. So I'm gonna add a carb. Add that right on. Tap, tap, tap. Add some crunchy pancetta. Come on guys, hello spring. So JP shows you that, I'm gonna show you a really, really quick and simple, delicious cucumber gimlet. What is this beautiful juice? It's freshly, we blended some cucumbers, strained, delicious, toss it, put it in. We are going to add some super fine sugar, some fresh lemon juice, some fresh mint leaves, Oh, I do not garden. Whee. Okay, and this we're gonna muddle. Sarah, our producer actually, told me a neat little trick. Instead of mashing, like you're angry at the world, you wanna push when you're muddling to the side of your pitcher and that's what really gets the essence of the mint leaves. Alrighty. Woo, okay, so. I'm gonna show you team alcohol. Team not alcohol. Pour it in. That's it. that's grody. You don't want that. This is smaller mint leaves. I make the mistake so you don't have to. All right, so how are we going to make this alcoholics? Chin. Chin. And for those not, ooh. Seltzer, seltzer, give it a quick stir. 
I do want to show a little garnish trick. You can use um, fresh lemon slices, or you can use a nice, you can do thin slices of cucumber. But guys, I do have to give a quick shout out. It is our food stylist hit, Martha's birthday tomorrow. So you know what, we're gonna celebrate with her because that's what we do here on Monday Bites. We have a good time even though it's Monday. So Martha, come on up here. We are giving you a birthday drink, girl. Okay, Woo! she's the reason why we make all our food super pretty. Oh my goodness, I have shaky hands today. I'm just so happy to celebrate with you. You can plop this in. Oh wait, sorry, alcohol. Plop this in. Happy birthday and thank you for making Monday Bites look great. Till next week. Woo! Happy Monday. Bye guys.